Hi, my name is Arius, and today we're going to talk about skills and how it can be part of your best build. So let's get right to it. Starting with perks, to me, these are the most important because they are the bonuses that give you free damage and free defense. So let's look at the weapon bonuses, Barbarian, Welcome Scout, and Armsman. The with a limitation of skill points you are faced with, there's a big decision here to either invest in all or invest in some. I choose only to invest in Barbarian since I only use two-handed weapons, for now anyway. Is this the smartest thing to do? Well, it really depends. By saving five points or so here, I can choose to have more varieties of spells or abilities. So moving on to the left side, for me, load bearer isn't really necessary unless you absolutely do not have enough room for your gear. If you don't, I suggest getting your free gems every Saturday by entering the arena and using those gems to buy more inventory space. Or just go grind for gems and buy some inventory space. But like I've said in other videos, the only thing gems are really good for inventory space and incredible treasure packs. Oh, and yes, of course, skill resets. So pick up elemental protection here, only if you're using a shield. Otherwise, if you're like me, you don't need it. Next, let's look at the trinity in the middle. Enchantment synergy, matching set, and advanced tempering. If you plan on crafting gear up to mythical, you'll definitely need advanced tempering 3. Matching set is nice if you're using all matching gear, and it's definitely worth having. Enchantment synergy is probably one of the most important as it helps increase all your similar equipped enchantments, or also referred to as stacked enchantments. Willpower and combat focus I believe is also a must as it is free damage mitigation when you are casting spells or skills. Now, let's look at the elemental perks, Flame, Poison, Frost, and Shock. These are great ways to boost damage to your elemental skills. For me, it's not worth having since I only use Breacher weapons, but now that I'm considering adding Paralyze to my build, I will be reallocating points towards Poison. So it really depends on what your build is or what damage types you'll be using. I would say focus on a few Ready. to get the hang of it at first, Fight. then decide if you want to use points in the other ones as well. Healing Surge is a nice to have for PvE or player vs environment, but not really needed otherwise. It's not useful in PvP or player vs player because of all the drain that happens from people's weapons, poisons, and shields. So that leaves us with maximum power and metal. Metal has been quite nice to have for me since I have a plus 4 bonus on my necklace, giving me a 40% boost to all my abilities at critical health. That means I can restore more magic for my renewing dodge, or do more damage at critical health with my other skills. Pretty neat, huh? Maximum power is another nice to have because it makes your spells more effective when cast at full magic. So if you've not been drained and you cast resist elements, you'll have that 15% more effective bonus, which can go up to as high as 40% if you have the bonus points from your necklace, much like I do on my metal bonus. This ends up making resist elements almost god mode for 10 seconds, especially if your opponent doesn't drain your magic. Now, on to spells. Let's start with Fireball, Lightning Bolt, and Absorb. Regardless of what kind of warrior you are, you will 99% of the time have one skill point in each of these skills. That gives you a lot of versatility because if you want to raise the points in these skills, you don't really have to add the skill points. You just need to have the right ring or rings. Absorb I wouldn't raise above one unless you're going to use it in PvE because it's mostly useful as a bubble that can shield you from Ice Spike or Paralyze in PvP. As long as you time it right, you'll still take the damage, but you won't get the stun. If you like using this in PvE to restore health, that's when you would take it to the higher levels. Lightning Bolt is the fastest non-instant cast spell in the game. Very important, because like in any duel, whomever can blast the spell off first can drain their opponent's magic first. So if you're quick to the trigger and want to raise this skill up, I highly recommend since there's nothing else you can do but block it with a shield that has lightning resistance. Fireball is the next fastest and the best skill to use when wanting to condition your opponent as fast as possible. Since fire 
is easier to condition opponents with due to it doing more damage over time than its elemental counterparts. Now, poison can condition as fast as fire. However, this fireball skill still has a shorter cast time than any poison spell, making it preferred as the fastest condition spell you have. Now, that brings me to poison. There are builds that use Poison Cloud to condition their opponents as well. And by the way, when I say condition, that means the application of Frost, Poison, Fire, or Shock. So let's move on to the Ice Tree. Frostbite is a good spell to slow down warriors or stamina fighters. It's great against Reckless Fury since it slows them from attacking, giving you a chance to survive. But it still works just fine against everyone else too, since weapon damage is what does most of our damage. Ice Spike is a must-have for any mage using that frost. It's got big damage and it applies the slow condition. And it hurts. Most mages run this as high as level 12 or even higher. And finally, Blizzard Armor. Combining this with Ward is truly powerful, especially since it's a quick cast spell. Another great way to soak up an Ice Spike as well. Moving on to the Lightning Tree. Delayed Lightning Bolt is a good way to get a whole bunch of burst damage at one time if you time it right. I'm also suspecting that Delayed Lightning Bolt resets your manual swing timer when conditioned. I've been seeing it a lot more over the last few weeks, but would like to know your thoughts on it. So let me know in the comments below. And of course, my favorite spell, Thunderstorm. Instant cast, does a lot of damage, and drains magic on condition. I run this with my stamina drain weapon and can really deplete resources with it. Next is the fire tree. Don't ask me about consuming Inferno. I used it for a bit and I think it sucks since it drains your stamina. Literally, it sucks it out. Someone tell me a good reason to use this spell. However, Wall of Fire is almost a must have for any fire build since it does less damage to you and more damage to your opponent. You can force your opponent to be more defensive or just kill themselves by running into your wall after you drink an aversion. Finally, the poison tree. Blind is good against newer people, but most experienced players will know what to do against it. So I don't see many people running this nor a good reason to use it. Paralyze, though, is a definite must-have for a lot of magic builds, or even other builds, too. Run this higher than 10 or 12 with enough EDIR, and you'll stop most people in their tracks. It's another good way to deal with Reckless Fury. The last at the top of the tree is Magic Surge and Echo Weapon. I've never seen anyone in the top 100 using Echo Weapon, but that doesn't mean it's not good. In fact, I may experiment with it myself soon, so I'll let you know how that goes. For Magic Surge, I have seen some creative mage builds where you cast Ice Spike after Ice Spike and then a Paralyze and then Ice Spike and then a Resist Elements. I mean, I think you know what I mean. Basically, spam those spells. I say it's neat, and I would love to see any build ideas around it. Next, let's go to Abilities. For the most part, I haven't seen any reason to raise abilities above one, unless you're going for a long harrying bash or a long staggering bash. The damage increase you get for the skills at the cost of higher stamina just doesn't seem to be worth it to me. But again, I'm always interested to hear what you think about it. So let's jump right into the strikes tree. You'll want to get all the way up to recovery strikes with one point into each of all the skills that are useful in almost any build. Recovery is a staple of mine because it gives me two hits and pulls me out of a stun. Venom strikes is nice if you're using aversions because it gives you a better chance at conditioning your opponent. Piercing is a staple for most elemental builds because it has that increase in chance at applying the elemental condition. And Quick Strikes is great for a low cost two hit skill. So let's move on to the Dodge Tree. I recommend one point in each all the way up to the Renewing Dodge because Renewing Dodge is such a strong skill at level one, it can return as high as 338 magic, which is perfect for a well-timed ward, all while mitigating some damage. The thing about Dodge is, is that it's the only skill that counters EDIR and PDIA. Since dodge isn't a resistance, those bonuses don't activate while dodging. And since most opponents use EDIR and PDIA, 
that means this is a good defensive skill to use if you know what you're doing. Otherwise, focusing dodge is really good for lowering cooldown timers, and adrenaline dodge is good in PvE paired with the increased healing skill on armor. Dodging strike is also a great low-cost dodge if you need something when your stamina is really low. So now, moving into the two-handed tree, as a two-hander myself, I don't really find use for these in the arena or in PvE. But I would like to highlight that Indomitable Smash is great for clearing conditions, and Guard Breaker is a great two-handed stunner. In fact, it's the only two-handed stunner. Skull Crusher is good for a strong attack, but I find hitting twice with a strike skill is more useful for breachers and even the elemental folks who are trying to apply conditions. Power attack I have a point in because I use the shield skills as well, so let's get to those. I would recommend putting one point in each. I put some extra points in Harrying Bash because that long timer really messes up some builds. Staggering is a good stun, and Shield Bash is a good low cost skill when you want to reset your high block, which all shield skills do, but this one is at a lower cost. And finally, Reckless Fury. Oh man, if you know what you're doing with this skill, then you can be dangerous. If you don't know, I'll give you a hint. You know, running Reckless Fury means you will become addicted to stamina potions just like Skuma. And that's it, my friends. I hope this Best Builds Guide series was helpful to you. If it was, share it with your friends. And heck, even your enemies. Because let's face it, it's much, much more fun to have a challenging and rewarding fight. And the more arena warriors there are to fight, the better. My name is Arius, and I play games. Stay rad, my friends. Cheers.